Hi everyone, welcome back to The Tech Twins, a YouTube channel created by us, two UC Berkeley students double majoring in mechanical engineering and business administration. We've interned at Apple, Tesla, and Microsoft, and created this channel to make the tech industry more accessible. We've always been curious about how to make the most out of college, so today we're joined by Mayuko, a senior iOS engineer in San Francisco, to tell us all about that. On the side, she runs a YouTube channel with over 100,000 subscribers, and today she's going to be talking about what she wishes she knew as an engineering student. Welcome, Mayuko. Hi. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. So first we'll talk about Mayuko's background, and then we'll dive into what she wishes she knew as an engineering student. To begin, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Where did you go to school? What did you study? And what do you do now? Yeah. So I went to school at UC San Diego, University of California, San Diego. And I graduated with my bachelor's in computer science. And I currently work as a senior iOS engineer at Patreon. Could you tell us a little bit more about what Patreon does? Yeah, so Patreon is a membership platform that helps creators get paid. We do that through providing membership tools for creators to run their business. It's great to be able to balance both like my technical skills as well as my passion and interest in the arts and work at Patreon. So it's kind of a dream job. I'm really excited <laughs> to be there. Now you're a senior software engineer at a tech company in the Bay Area, and that seems like a really far away reality for a lot of people. So what did you do while you were in college at UC San Diego to help you get there? Yeah, totally. So while I was in college, I was going to school and also doing part-time work so that I had money to eat and stuff. Um, and then I was also heavily involved in student organizations. So the student orgs that I were involved in, I wasn't part of uh, like, for instance, the CS Society or the CS Student Society at UCSD. Um, but I was part of a co-ed engineering professional fraternity. That helped me to really widen my network and also have a lot more friends who are studying engineering. Engineering obviously is a really difficult program at all universities to study and so it was great to have a lot of friends who are basically going through the same things that I was and also just to have friends to you know hang out with as well. I think I built a lot of my communication and leadership skills that way. Um, I was a uh, vice president for a little bit and I took a bunch of other posts at other student organizations and needing to work heavily with other people, really developed some of those like soft skills that I use in my job today. Other than that, I also did internships throughout my college career. My first internship, I think, was the summer after my second year. And I kind of got that by already working at the place that I was going to get an internship at, but not as an intern. I was working as kind of like a assistant or a secretary or something that didn't require any sort of computer science skills at all, but that's how I got to know everyone in the department. So when they opened up seats for the internship program, I was like, I, I want that. Can I have it? <laughs> um, and they're like, yeah, of course, you know who you are. You have great work ethic. Yeah, you, you have a spot. So that was my first internship. And then honestly, getting the first internship or job is oftentimes the hardest. So after that, uh, I got an internship at the Sci Red Foundation, which had an office at UC San Diego. After that, I got an internship at Intuit, which was my first kind of like big corporate tech company internship. So yeah, the way that I kind of got to the Bay Area was, I guess, little mini steps to get me to working at a Bay Area tech company, which was into it. And then when I graduated, oftentimes internships turn into full-time jobs. Yeah, I took a, I took a full-time job at Intuit. And I worked in San Diego for about a year, but then I told them, hey, I want to move up to the Bay Area. I want to see what the tech scene is all about. Okay. So I got transferred. So that's kind of my very gradual process. It wasn't like a hey, I graduated, now I get to go to the Bay Area. Some people can do that, and that's awesome. And yeah. there are tech companies that, that recruit specifically for that. But mine was a very steady, slow type of pace, and I'm very happy to be where I am today. So at Berkeley, a lot of our peers are really interested in research as an extracurricular. Were you involved in research at UCSD, and what's your opinion on that um, as an extracurricular during undergrad? I didn't do research as an extracurricular. Originally, like when I started college, I had... Uh, and in, I had an interest in going down the academic path. I was like, I'm going to get my bachelor's and then my master's and then my PhD. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I regret it. I think I'm still very glad that I chose the path that I did today. I think research would be a great opportunity if that's kind of the path that you want to go down towards. Mm -hmm. If your goals are to really like study heavily like specific concepts in engineering that you're really interested and passionate in, then there are opportunities 
students, especially just naturally being in the university setting. There's other students, there's a lot of professors that you can talk to. So if it aligns with your goals, I think it's a great way and great path to go down towards. Um, I think it just wasn't personally my own goal. Yeah, and to add on to that from my experience, it seems that some people really like research and some people don't, but the only way to figure it out is to do some research and see for yourself. So for anyone who is still deciding whether they want to do it or not, you can't really figure it out until you try it out. So that's what I would recommend. Definitely. Moving on to the portion where we talk about what you wish you knew while you were an engineering student. Let's get straight to it. Um, GPA, how important actually is it once you graduate? And we know for internships, it's slightly important, but especially uh, down the line, once you graduate, how does that matter? And how does that change over the years? Yeah, I definitely stressed over my GPA when I was in school and immediately afterwards as well. <laughs> but um, I've been working for about, what year is it, 2018? For about yes. four years now. <laughs> Uh, and I've only found it to be less important over time. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I honestly, like, I didn't have a great GPA when I was in school. Like, I was not proud of it. Um, I was, like, below average, and I stressed over it a lot. Um, honestly, as you get more and more, like, experience, especially if you're working in kind of, like, a company setting, um, then those experiences speak more to what your abilities are than your GPA. Naturally, as you get more and more jobs and you have more and more opportunities under your belt, those are the things that prospective employers are looking at more so than GPA. Because at a certain point, like, there's a, there's so much you can learn as an undergrad, um, but, like, the opportunities that you take after you graduate are also very, very important. If anything, it's just kind of, like, a chip on my shoulder at this point. I'm glad to find out that the GPA is not, like, something that follows you for 20, 30 years. <laughs> So another question that Mark and I have had is one of the things we've noticed as students is that when you're in undergrad, you have this free ticket to kind of introduce yourself to anyone that you want to learn from, whether that's through LinkedIn or just in networking events. And we've used that to meet people who we maybe wouldn't have ever had access to before. Did you take advantage of that during your undergrad or um, do you recognize a difference now that you're out of college and no longer, I guess, have that student card to play. Yeah, I did not use this to my advantage when I was in college, and I really, really wish I did, specifically because at college, there's a lot of people around you. Like, you mm -hmm. have everyone in your department in your year, and then there's also everyone, like, outside of your year in the same department. So if you're part of, like, the mechanical engineering department, you have everyone there who's, like, studying mechanical engineering, kind of going through the same things that you're going through and thinking about the same problems that you are. And then there's also professors. Um, there's, like, advisors. There's people outside of your department. Like, you, ha you just have a lot more access to these people in kind of a very central location that I found hard to like find after college because you have to go out and like find those communities specifically um so yeah i i really wish i had taken more advantage of this and realized that when i was in college um i was really shy in college and i thought that like people i admired or wanted to learn from like, were too busy to talk to me or like didn't care to talk to me so i was definitely scared of rejection and a lot of it was like very very strong imposter syndrome that i was like but I'm a nobody. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so that really got to my head a lot. And uh, yeah, I, I wish that I would have gotten over it. I think in my adult life, I've gotten over it and I'm still working to get over it. And now I'm realizing like, yeah, like people are like happy to talk about things that they're passionate about. If you find yourself in a position where you are like afraid to talk to these people, the thing that calms me down the most is just like, they're just people, they're mm -hmm. human beings. They're just like us. Um, except they, they like know a couple things and stuff. So like just connecting at a human level and getting to know them as a person, as well as like, like learning from them, um, is a really unique experience that I think that like college students should definitely take advantage of. So now that you're in the position where you're working in a company and you might have people reaching out to you, what do you say when people say, oh, Mayuko, you're this soft senior software engineer and I want to do that one day? Yeah, so prior to starting my YouTube channel, which has really like amplified my audience, if someone was like, hey, go, I really want to be an iOS engineer one day, I'd be like, oh my gosh, yeah, let me talk to you about this. Like, <laughs> I, I have all of the things that I can tell you about. 
here are the websites to go to, here are the people mm-hmm. that you can follow, here are the conferences that you might be interested in going to. There's just a lot of knowledge that I'm so happy to pass down. I think my need for that really birthed my passion to create a YouTube channel because doing that at scale and doing that to people who I wouldn't have been in a physical space with otherwise Mm -hmm. has really like helped to satiate my hunger of doing that and also hopefully influence others who are looking for that kind of advice through watching my YouTube channel. What is your biggest regret from your undergrad career? I think it has to do with the taking more opportunities thing that we were talking Mm -hmm. about. I think even as something as little as going to office hours and like getting to know know my professors is something that I was like terrified of doing. I think that would have helped to really engage with the coursework and be more embedded within the CS department, which I didn't do a great job of. I wish I knew just like how fortunate I was to be at a university with a big CS department and take advantage of those opportunities. At the same time, like I'm still really happy with the opportunities I did take. And now that I'm working at Patreon, which is like my dream job, I'm like, wow, I got here. Mm -hmm. If I had taken another path, would I also have ended up here? So I'm happy with the path that I take. But I think that if I had taken more opportunities, I would have had a richer college experience. To answer the exact title of this video, what specifically did you wish you knew as an engineering student? A senior software engineer might you go talking to sophomore or junior in college might you go? What would you tell her? Yeah, I would totally say this is like your time to learn and explore and experiment and make mistakes. I had a lot of pressure from like parents and others to like get good grades and graduate and get a good job. So I was really focused on these very specific metric type things of like, I need to accomplish this, then I need to accomplish this, and then I need to accomplish this. I wish I'd appreciated kind of like where I was at more. And then I think I would have taken more of an opportunity to like stretch out of my comfort zone and ask lots of questions and had gotten to know more people. It's unfortunate that this is something that I only started to realize and value in my adult life. College money would be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I need to get this good grade because that's how I'm going to get a job. And if I don't get a job, then like, what am I going to do? Yeah, I I think college is such a great time to explore what you are interested in, what you're passionate about, getting to know yourself more. That is totally what I would tell, like, 18-year-old Mayuko, like, don't be afraid of taking risks. Don't be afraid of going out there and reaching out of your comfort zone and doing what you need to do to, like, learn about yourself and the world more. So as a student, it can be really easy to get consumed in grades, internships, these metrics that you were talking about. What do you think is the importance of self-care as part of a routine of being an engineering student or even being a working engineer? I think it's so important. I think college is like an infamous time to compromise in your self-care. Yeah. But if anything, I think because of that, it's like even more important to focus on self-care. One thing that I realized in my senior year of college was that if I just get eight hours of sleep every night, then my days are so much better. I can stay awake during class. My mood was better. And it felt like I could be proactive in how I led my life instead of feeling like my life controlled me when I had been getting like two to six hours of sleep. But especially in college when it's easy to solve things with an Mm all-nighter and then like the next day you totally regret it. Like self-care is very, very, very important. I think in college too, especially when you're just so busy, Mm -hmm. mental health is also a really important part. Mental health, I think, can be a very difficult thing to manage when you're in college. And some people really struggle with this, but like a lot of universities have campus resources to help you. And I think understanding and knowing that you need help and getting help is something that is is like one of the best things that you can do for yourself. I think sustainable pace of work is so important. Promoting a really sustainable pace that is healthy for each individual person, I think should be prioritized at any stage of life that you're in. Okay, great. Thank you, Mayuko, for joining us uh, for this video and for your candid advice. So that wraps up this video for this week. If you like this topic, like this video, comment with any questions, and subscribe for future updates.